Hey, what's up? It's Karen San Diego, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about how to enjoy the holidays after VSG surgery. To be honest, this video could honestly apply to people who haven't even had VSG surgery and are just on a weight loss journey, whether that's through some sort of bariatric surgery, whether you're on a restrictive diet, or maybe you're just trying not to overindulge this holiday. I think this video could be helpful for a lot of different people on a weight loss journey, even if you didn't get VSG. But for those of you who do not know, I got VSG surgery in March. Yeah, March of 2022 so i am currently eight months post-op i'll be nine months post-op next week which is crazy but with the holiday season approaching it's definitely something that has been on my mind how am i going to navigate the holidays and having all of these events to go to where food is going to be at the top of the to-do list um, after having a surgery that restricts the amount of food that I can eat. So I thought if this is something that I have been thinking about, then you all must also be thinking about this, at least I think. So I wanted to create this video to give you guys kind of like a guide on how to get through the holidays and actually enjoy it after VSG surgery or after starting your weight loss journey. The holidays are definitely a season of overeating, let's be honest. So this time of year can be very, very difficult for those of us who have had a surgery that prevents us from overeating, but it is not impossible to enjoy this time of the year without overindulging, I promise. So because I did have VSG surgery, I'm going to keep most of the points in this video strictly talking about VSG. However, if you fall into a different category, you can just adjust based off of your lifestyle. So for VSG, how you're going to navigate the holidays after VSG is going to depend on what stage of your journey that you're in. So I know um, there are a lot of you that follow me that have just got surgery. Like I was just speaking on Instagram to somebody who literally got surgery today. So I wanted to make sure that I start the video by starting off talking about what to do if you literally just got surgery, meaning you are on your liquid diet still, or maybe you're on your soft foods or period stage. So we're going to organize this video by going through different stages and what you should do depending on the stage that you're at in your journey. So I wanted to start off with somebody who literally just got surgery. You are a few weeks post-op, you're on your liquid diet, and you want to go enjoy the holidays with the rest of your family. In this case, I would recommend bringing your own broth um, with you, or that could be like a broth that you made, it could be a broth from a soup, um, but bring in your own, that way you know what you're going to be eating. You can have it, warm it up, sit at the table with everybody else and eat what you can eat, that way you don't feel left out. And honestly, I know for me anyway, when I was in my liquid phase of my journey, the liquids were difficult enough to get down. So it's not like you're going to be sitting there like wishing you could eat the turkey and one and being tempted to eat the turkey. Liquids are hard enough to get down during the liquid phase. So I think you'll be okay as far as temptation. However, you still want to be able to sit there and have that communal eating experience. So definitely bring your own, whatever it is that you want to bring. I personally recommend bringing something savory. You could do like a turkey broth and put all the different spices and veggies in the pot so that you kind of get all those same flavors that you would get on Thanksgiving, only in broth form. Another option that you could do if you were on a liquid diet, and maybe you actually are somebody who would get tempted to eat some of the food that is provided there and you don't even want to tempt yourself. In that case, I'd recommend sitting this one out. There will be other years, there will be other Thanksgivings, other Christmas celebrations. This was one that you can definitely celebrate at home. Maybe just you and a close loved one. Maybe you guys can just sit at home and kind of just do your own thing. That way you're not tempted. But definitely, if you know that you're not going to get tempted because liquids are hard enough for you to get down, then in that case, bring your own. But if not, just sit it out if you are in your liquid phase of your journey. Also, for those of you on your liquid phase or your period phase, a good thing to do here as well would be to arrive late and leave early. That way you're there, you get to experience it, but you don't have to sit around and see people eating for too long and feel a little bit triggered by it. You can come in after maybe everybody's already sat down and eaten, and that would also give you the perfect setup to be able to eat your food in privacy where nobody would really notice that you're not eating that much food because you got there after everybody already sat at the table and ate. So I think that is perfect to be able to kind of go unrecognized while also not giving yourself too much time to be able to overindulge. 
I didn't even write that one down. That was straight off the top of the head. That's a good idea, Karen. Let me write that down. Next on the list is if you are in your soft food stage or your pureed food stage, good thing for you guys in this stage is you can actually eat a good amount of the things that are going to be at the table. In the soft food stage and the pureed food stage, all you really need to do is make sure that you are sticking to eating things that are soft in texture so that when you chew it, you can chew it down to a pureed consistency. So that means if you decide that you wanna eat some turkey with some cranberry sauce or you want to have a little bit of stuffing or whatever it is that you want just make sure that you're not eating something that is like red meat or anything that's going to be very difficult to chew to a pureed consistency but a lot of the foods that we eat on thanksgiving at least in my family a lot of those foods are foods that are softer and can be easily chewed down to a pureed consistency even if even if those foods aren't the foods that are like the highest in protein or the lowest in carbs or any of those things you're going to be eating such a small amount that it is okay to taste a little bit of it put a little bit on your plate make sure you chew 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 until it is at a pureed consistency and then just go ahead and have some um i'd recommend using little tiny bowls maybe like the dessert plates would be a good option just to make sure that you're seeing how small of a portion you're taking but honestly in this phase as well most of the time you wouldn't have the restriction to overdo it anyway and then what i recommend is bringing a to-go plate um i know my family usually will provide these but if your family doesn't then make sure you bring a to-go plate of your own so you can pack food and take for later just in case there's anything that you really really wanted to put on your plate that you didn't get a chance to you can always pack it and have it for later on um, eat it another day that way you're not missing out on any of the flavors that you wanted and are still able to sit at the table with everybody else and have small amounts of food another option for you in the pureed or soft food stage of your journey would be to bring your own thing so let's say that you don't even want to go down the road of eating whatever is available because you're like uh, -uh if I eat what's there I'm gonna wanna eat a plate of mac and cheese and I know I shouldn't eat that and I don't wanna risk it, I don't want any of that. Honestly, I just have the mac and cheese. But if you're not like me and you do not want to do that, then I would 1000% recommend bringing your own dish, whether that is for you to have a personal dish for you to just eat at the time, or maybe providing something that can be shared with other people that you know is going to be good for you. Keeping in mind that during the pureed stage and the soft food stage, you can eat anything that is soft enough to chew to a pureed consistency. So that doesn't mean that you have to bring baby food to share with everybody. You can just bring something, maybe it's some sort of chicken or maybe like mashed potatoes or even a ricotta bake. But you could make that and then bring it with you and offer it to other people. Maybe they'll want some, maybe they don't. Doesn't matter. What matters is that you have something that you can eat and you know that you'll be good because you have this food already available to you, even if nobody eats it. If nobody eats it, just take the rest home and you're good for the week. You got food. On the flip side of all of these recommendations, I also know that there are a lot of you who have recently started your journey, you've gotten surgery, but you haven't exactly talked to your family about this. If you fall into that category and you don't want to be sitting there eating a tiny amount of food because you feel like people may ask you questions and you're not quite ready to share that you've gotten surgery with anybody, there's a few options for you as well. So the first thing that I would say that if you are not someone who feels comfortable sharing with anybody that you've gotten surgery and you don't want anybody to see you eating small portions or not eating at all or drinking broth at the dinner table or whatever, then the first option, which might sound a little bit harsh, but the first option I would give you is to sit this year out. Next year, you'll have a little bit more restriction and you may be able to eat what looks more normal to people looking on the outside. So you could just sit this one out so that you don't have to explain yourself i think that would be like the easiest less um less effort option here but let's say like you don't want to share with anybody share with anybody what you did but you also don't want to miss thanksgiving because you really enjoy that time with family in that case go and then when you're there what you can do is put food on your plate the um don't overdo it so don't overpack your plate but just put a normal appearing amount of food on your plate and then eat what you can eat um stop when you're full obviously and then kind of quietly sneak away you can put the rest of the food in a tupperware to go um that way you can still have that food 
but at the dinner table no one's gonna really notice that you aren't eating the way to make sure that you're not the way to make sure that it's not really noticeable what you're what you are and are not eating is by just talking talking as you're eating eating little bits at a time and then you can just get up and discreetly pack away the rest of your food when no one's paying attention this option might require you to pay a little bit more attention to the to your surroundings and who's looking at you so you know when the right moment to get up and walk away is but if you are somebody who really really cares about not sharing with this information with your family but also really really cares about being there then I think it would be worth the extra few steps just to make sure you cover your tracks. But um, it's definitely doable to be able to eat the small portion that you need to eat and not be noticed. Another option here would be depending on how your family does holiday meals, maybe choose to sit away from where everybody else is sitting. Um, this will be especially helpful if you have a kid. If you have a kid, when I'm telling you having a kid sometimes, is the perfect excuse to get out of anything but you can use your child you can put food on your plates for yourself and for your kid feed your kid off of your plate nobody will notice what you're not eating they'll be more concerned with what the kid is eating so that would be the perfect way to be able to get away with not eating that much food because you're just putting you're feeding your kid off of your plate so it looks like you're eating because the kid is eating so you get it that or you could even sit next to your spouse or whoever you came with that does know you had surgery and maybe when no one's looking put a little bit of food onto their plate so it looks like your plate is getting empty yeah that's a little bit more work and it requires you to be very aware of your surroundings but whatever works works if it makes you feel more comfortable the extra step is definitely worth it and even if you don't have a kid with you just try to see like if you can sit away from everybody else that way you don't have to be super aware of who's looking at you and you'll be able to eat in comfort without having a bunch of eyeballs on you i know that sometimes families like to sit at the table sometimes people just kind of sit wherever if you can manage to sit wherever or sit away from everybody else in an area that isn't really visible to everyone then that would be perfect for being able to just do you without having anybody look at you Another option if you are someone who does not want to share with anybody why you're not eating as much because you don't want to let anybody know that you had surgery, an option here would just to be tell people that you're on a restricted diet. They don't need to know that you had surgery if you don't want to share that information. But if you know that somebody might ask you, hey, why aren't you eating a lot of food? You can just let them know. Maybe you tell them that you're on a calorie restricted diet. You're just trying to eat a less amount of calories and you still want to be able to enjoy the food, but you don't want to overeat. So um, you can tell them you're on a diet similar to the diet that I was on before surgery, the 1200 calorie diet. Just be like, yeah, I'm on just a 1200 calorie diet for the day. I don't want to go over it. So I'm just going to pack the rest up and take it home. But the food is really good. I think when people ask you why you're not eating nine times out of 10, it's because they're worried that the food isn't good. So as long as you can reassure them like the food is so good, but I'm on this 1200 calorie diet, so I can't eat that much of it. So I'm definitely going to take the rest to go. And I think answering that way alone can definitely get a lot of people off your back and get them to stop asking you questions. But if you don't even want people to know you're on a diet, you don't want them to know nothing about your weight loss journey, then in that case, just pay attention to who's around you and sneak up when no one's looking, pack the food away and come back with your empty plate. They'll think you ate it all. Boom. All right, so I talked about the people on the liquid stage. I talked about people on the pureed and soft food stage. Now getting to people who are about where I'm at in my journey, which is where I can eat anything. There really isn't much of anything that my stomach doesn't like, so I can eat whatever I wanna eat. And as amazing as that sounds, it is scary. And it is scary just because be I have the ability to eat anything, which means I can, and I have to work harder to stop myself from eating whatever I want to eat because obviously I don't want to overindulge. And you may think, well, Karen, how can you overindulge if you can only eat about four ounces of food in one sitting? Because it's exactly that. It's in one sitting. So at Thanksgiving, we're there for a long period of time. I can easily eat over it on the time that I'm there and be able to overeat, but we don't want to do that. So there's a few things that I recommend doing in that case. So just like I said, with all the other stages, um, in your stage, so once you're after, you're over three months post-op and you're at the point where you can eat whatever you wanna eat, I would recommend still potentially bringing your own dish. That means that there is something, without a doubt, you know there is something that is going to be there, that is going to be easy on your stomach, you know that it is going to have, be high in protein, low in carb, and you know that you have it there. Whether it's personal just for you, or you make enough to share with everybody, having something that you know for a fact you can eat is going to make things easier for you. 
To be 100% honest with you, I do not plan on bringing my own food to Thanksgiving. Um, I would like to soft life Thanksgiving <laughs> and not have to stress about food. I'm coming to eat. I am not coming to cook. So I am not bringing anything. What I personally plan on doing for Thanksgiving is eating what is available, but just portioning my plate out into exactly how much I should eat and taking food to go. That is what I plan on doing. I'm going to eat the one time. I'm going to put a small amount of food on my plate. I'm going to eat and stop when I feel full. And then before I leave, I'm going to grab my Tupperware and fill up my plate and take food home so I have food for the rest of the week. And I'm going to try to stay away from taking anything that I shouldn't continue to eat. So my goal is to take a lot of the turkey home or any of the proteins and things like that. I love doing that because then I can take the turkey and make like a turkey salad type of thing. Um, similar to like chicken salad, but with turkey. I can take if there's like things like mashed potatoes and things like that. I like to eat a little bit of that with my turkey sometimes with some gravy. And I can definitely have that throughout the week. I'll stay away from taking things like the mac and cheese because I know that that is a weakness for me. I can't have chill when it comes to mac and cheese. So I'm not going to put any of that in my Tupperware, but I will put it on my plate on Thanksgiving. Just a small amount so that I don't overdo it. Also part of my things, my plan for Thanksgiving is to arrive later than everybody else. And the reason I say to arrive later is I don't want to arrive when I have too much grace period to continue eating. So I want to get there at a time where I'm going to eat and then they're going to start packing food away. People are going to start doing their to-go plates. I don't want to have the option to be sitting there snacking, to be having multiple plates. I don't want to put myself in a position because although I am further along in my journey, I'm not perfect and I still have moments where I push my boundaries a little bit. So because it's Thanksgiving, I don't want to allow myself to do that. So I do plan to arrive slightly late um, as well. Same thing that I said for all the other stages, but um, just so that I know that I'm not giving myself too much time to continue eating. And along with arriving late, I also plan on leaving pretty soon after I arrive. So like I make my entrance, I say, what's up? I'm here. You know that I was here. You saw me, but I'm here for a good time, not a long time. All right. So next thing we're going to talk about is something that thankfully for me, this isn't something that I think will be a huge problem for me because I'm not that big of a dessert girl. I don't have that big of a sweet tooth. My, my I have more of a savory tooth. So that's why I like mac and cheese and like, fried chicken, things like that is more so what my guilty pleasures are. But as far as a sweet tooth, if you are somebody that has a sweet tooth and it is a problem, like you feel like you cannot resist, then I have a few options for you. The first option I would say is to make your own thing. So there's so many I've showed you in my what I eat in a day videos before. Duncan Hines has like keto cake mixes. Um, Birch Benders has some. I don't know about Birch Benders though, because I've not had anything good from them. Um, and there's like so many other companies that make low carb um, cakes and things like that. Even in my supermarket, my super, my local supermarket is a shop, right? And even in their like normal bakery aisle, they have like sugar free cakes and things like that, that you could bring. And the fun thing about that is you will have family members who will want to try the sugar free thing, even if they are not on a weight loss journey, even if they are not um, someone who's had surgery, some people just do want to try to watch their figure a little bit. So you can bring it for everybody and offer it to everyone and see who's interested in that. Also just so that you know that you have something that you can indulge in. Um, that way you know at the end of the night you can have your dessert and you don't have to feel bad about it. For me personally, I actually think that this is something that I might do specifically because for where I'm going for Thanksgiving, I know that a few people who are gonna be there are on keto. So I know that they may benefit from me bringing something sugar-free. So I might just do that just because I know that there's other people who will wanna have it as well. And I know that I'll be able to have some dessert without feeling bad about it. But if that wasn't the case, then I would go right on ahead with tip number two, which is just to have a little bit of the dessert if you really, really want it. But I want to stress this is something that I'm recommending for those of you who are further along in your journey. So this is for those of you who are after five months post-op, you're in a good swing of things already and your sleeve isn't too fresh. When you're earlier on, you don't know how your body's going to react to the sugar. So I do not recommend pushing it. In your case, definitely bring your own thing. Um, if you are on your liquid diet, you can bring some sugar-free jello or sugar-free, um, no sugar-free jello. If you're on soft foods, you can bring some sugar-free pudding. If you are further along than that, you can bring a sugar-free cake. 
but if you are someone who is after five months post-op then you can literally just have some of whatever it is i know pie is a big thing for thanksgiving this is why i'm not worried about myself because i absolutely hate pie i don't eat pie and i know that pie will be the dessert that's going to be served at my thanksgiving so I'm not going to get tempted to eat that at all um but if you are someone who loves pie and you are going to be tempted to eat that take a tiny 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 amount do not pack any to go in a to go to go container because you don't need to continue past this day but in the moment eat a tiny 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 amount and let that be it just don't continue doing it because that is where we mess ourselves up the theme for this whole thing is either indulge in it or don't but most importantly before you step into any holiday environment you want to have a good solid talk with yourself and have an understanding of where you're at in your journey. If you are somebody who is not at a place to be able to resist temptation, maybe sit it out or bring your own food with you. If you're someone who's a little further along and you feel like you know you got the willpower, then maybe just indulge a little bit, but don't pack anything to go that is going to throw you off your goals long term. Just bring some protein and things like that with you home so you know you got food because who's trying to cook the week of Thanksgiving or Christmas? or any holiday for that matter. You of course know yourself best, so make sure that as you listen to all the tips I provided in this video, that you take the ones that are best for you. You know you better than I know you. That's why I gave different options for different scenarios because I wanted to make sure that regardless of where you're at in your journey, that there was something in this video that you could have found helpful that you can take with you into the holiday season so that you can have an amazing time because what i don't want is for anybody to feel like starting their journey to better themselves is going to hinder their happiness and honestly let's be real um communal eating around the holidays is something that brings people joy and i just wanted to make sure that you guys knew that you can still do it just in a different way this whole process is a journey because you're relearning how to do life and the holidays are no different. You do not have to count yourself out unless you feel like you need to this year. But even if you are counting yourselves out, you can find new things to do to make the holidays special for you and your family. So yeah, this is the end of this video. I really, really hope that you found this video helpful. I hope that you are going to have an amazing holiday season. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in my next video. Where in the world is Karen San Diego? From BK to Belly, it's anywhere she say so. She changing your life, can see it straight through her eyes.